So I think it's an exciting thing when we hear things like, don't be so focused on the letter of the law. Let's focus a little bit on the intent and the spirit. And if you ever look at what's going on before the Supreme Court, that is after all, all that they're attempting to do is define what the intention of a law was when it was crafted, define the intention of the Constitution as it was written, and apply it to our society, recognizing that social mores evolve over time. And I'm sure you could think of some social mores that we don't even want to legislate. You can all think of one. You can shout it out. It's fine. This is interactive sermon time. You guys are quiet tonight. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Like it's nice when you go into visit somebody's home to bring a gift. I don't think we need to legislate it, but it's certainly nice. It falls under the social mores of creating good neighborly bonds. Anybody else have any other social mores that we kind of do that you don't legislate, but it's nice to have around? It's nice when somebody lets you through in traffic. Let's you in traffic. That's a good one. Anything else? Holding the door open, just being a mensch. And I think in many regards, when we look and we understand a specific verse in the Torah, it wasn't what the verse said, but it was the interpretive history of it that follows exactly what you guys are talking about, letting somebody in traffic or holding the door open. I knew that was what was intended when Moses was up on Mount Sinai writing the book of Deuteronomy. I didn't really do that, but we can, you know, we can assume. And there we read this wonderful verse, be sure to keep the commandments, decrees, and laws that the Lord your God has enjoined upon you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may go well with you, that you may be able to possess the good land that the Lord your God promised on oath to your fathers. Now, when we understand what it means to do the good and the right, Rashi really refers this to compromise to acting beyond the strictest demands of the law. We don't have to let somebody in traffic. We don't have to hold the door open. We don't have to do certain things, but it's awful nice if we do. Ramban famously wrote an explanation further, both including Rashi's verse and going yet a little bit beyond. And he said that no system of law could encompass every dimension of every human situation and insisted that Torah needs to add general directives such as you shall be holy and you shall do the right and the good. Because if we get so focused on keeping kosher, on all of the minutia, and again, I keep kosher as a reminder, but sometimes it gets a little bit crazy if I'm going to bury a spoon for three days or not when I'm re-koshering an item because it got put in the wrong drawer and used in the wrong pot. It gets a little bit cumbersome with three kids running around, let me tell you. I don't think that it was intended to be described that way, that it's supposed to be so cumbersome. I always assumed that the purpose of something like Kashrut, that it was supposed to remind us to be holy, remind us to understand where our food came from, remind us to be better people. Not that you have to keep kosher, we're reformed Jews, enjoy your pepperoni pizza, all the same, please. <laughs> Ramban, again, when citing Rashi, was really going and seeing it differently. At first, we understand that Moses said that you are to keep God's statutes and God's and his testimonies, which he commanded you. And now he's seeing that even where he has not commanded you, give thought, think about what you're doing, go forward with kindness and goodness, and try to be right in the eyes, not only of yourself, but of your person next to you, your neighbor who you're engaged with. It's an amazing thing to think about. How can we be right? Well, the truth is, is that if we're so focused on being right, we can sometimes be jerks. I'm sure you've had that experience too. No comment. I do want to cite one thing specifically. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs wrote in his final book, Morality, Restoring the Common Good in Divided Times, Quote, societal freedom cannot be sustained by market economics and liberal democratic politics alone. It needs a third element. 
morality, a concern for the welfare of others, an act of commitment to justice and compassion, a willingness to ask not just what is good for me, but what is good for all of us together. It is about us, not me. It's about we, not I. He put forth in his faith and biblical authority, morality, facts focused on love, love of God, love of your neighbor, love of a stranger, and implores his readers when looking at his book to turn outward, shed victimhood of woe is me, that attitude of entitlement and resentment toward others for not having what we want, to open our hearts to build bonds of trust through compassion and sacrifice. That is hard work, and yet that's what we are tasked to do. It's not that we must follow the strict facts of the law, because in doing so, I believe we miss the point. It's not that we just have to light the Shabbos candles at the most specific time. Well, then we might miss out on celebrating Shabbat altogether with friends and family who might be coming in a little bit late to be with us. It's ultimately, I believe, about trying to live our life in A, the most modern sense, bring our Judaism forward, but B, how we choose to interact with others. It's our choice to do the right thing. And I want us to think about this image. It comes from Kabbalah, where we have judgment and compassion on two opposite sides of a scale. If we were to be so judgeful, so harsh, so focused on being right that the other person is wrong then the scale is weighted one way if we also focus too much on compassion so that we become a doormat that's not good either but in essence we have to live again in balance we have to treat others with kindness with compassion with love we have to reach beyond ourselves, even if it's uncomfortable, like really having to let somebody in the traffic line, even though they should have left their house sooner. Of course, why didn't we think of that? We should really act with compassion. Like, yes, hold the door for somebody who has a bag of groceries coming behind you. We should be kind to each other because it's easy to be judgmental. It's actually harder to put that aside be present in the moment and give somebody your heart just for a few minutes. Shabbat Shalom.